Wittenstein High Integrity Systems presents Coffee Break Training. Welcome to this second video in the Safe RTOS Plus Trace series of Coffee Break Training. Part 1 of this video introduces some basics of task scheduling in a real time operating system using the Safe RTOS Plus Trace tool to help us visualise our discussion. Part 2 will discuss the more complex case of priority inversions. More information and additional training sessions can be found on our website. Follow us on Twitter at Wittenstein underscore Hiss for updates on new training sessions. Before we look at a real system, let's remind ourselves of what the Safe RTOS scheduler policy is. That is, how it decides which task to run at the point a contact switch occurs. Each task has a priority in the system. The scheduler guarantees that the highest priority task able to execute will be selected by the scheduler. Tasks can be given equal priorities, and if equal priority tasks are able to run, they execute in round-robin fashion when tasks of that priority are chosen to execute. Now let's see how that works in a specific example of a very simple system. This simple application has three main tasks. One is low priority, one medium priority, and one high priority. There are also an interrupt service routine and ISR handler, but we'll ignore those for now. The timescales in this snapshot show about four ticks or milliseconds of time. Remembering the introduction session, time runs vertically down the screen with tasks shown as solid colour blocks when running and checkered blocks when they are able to run but the scheduler does not allow it. The tasks are passing data to each other using the queue send and queue receive mechanisms. This causes the tasks to block and unblock as data is waited on or received. We can see how the Safe RTOS Plus Trace GUI shows these events and the effects they have in unblocking tasks waiting on data. Starting from the top of this snapshot, initially the high priority task is paused for three ticks. Next to run would be the medium priority task, but this is waiting to receive data from a queue. Finally, the low priority task has been blocked by a delay call. So at the start of the trace, the idle task is running. As the tick occurs, the low priority task is unblocked as the delay expires. This allows the first queue send to occur. This immediately wakes the medium priority task, which has been waiting to receive the data. Because Safe RTOS is a preemptive real time kernel, this unblocking of the medium priority task automatically causes a context switch, and the medium priority task starts running. This keeps to the guarantee stated earlier that the highest priority task able to execute will be selected when a context switch occurs. The high priority task is still blocked because of the delay statement. Immediately after the medium priority task has received the queue item, it in turn sends data to another queue before blocking for two ticks. As the medium priority task blocks, it allows the low priority task to run again and perform another queue send. The loop goes round another iteration with all tasks blocked, allowing the idle task to run until the next tick. In this tick, both medium and high priority tasks are still blocked by delays, so the low priority task can run. Unlike in the previous case, when data is sent to the queue, the medium priority task is still blocked by the delay statement so it doesn't wake up. Instead, the low priority task continues to run, sends another item to the other queue, and then delays for a further tick. This tick is more interesting. All three tasks happen to have finished their delays at the same time, and so enter the ready state at the same time. As we said in the scheduler policy, the highest priority task runs first. This performs two queue receives in turn before delaying for another three ticks. As it delays, in turn the medium priority task is selected and runs next, again performing two queue interactions before delaying. Finally, the low priority task runs before delaying for a tick. The astute viewer may have noticed that the low priority task is filling the queues faster than the medium and high priority tasks are emptying them. If we jump down the trace a bit further in time, we can see what happens when the queues fill up. During this loop iteration, the low priority task is able to send to the first queue, but becomes blocked on the second because the queue is full. The code is written to wait up to 20 ticks before timing out, so the task enters the blocked state pending a queue receive happening to create space. 
We can see this happen after a further two ticks, when the high priority task completes its delay and performs a queue receive. This changes the state of the low priority task, but it doesn't start executing as it isn't the highest priority task able to run until the high priority task does the second queue receive and blocks again. This very simple example has shown us several features of Safe RTOS Plus Trace. Firstly, the state transitions of tasks, including how task priorities affect the scheduler. Secondly, it shows queue event interactions with tasks and how queues becoming full or non-empty can cause scheduler events to happen and context switches to occur. This sort of information can help with application design decisions, for instance in optimising queue sizes such that tasks don't get blocked due to full queues. Thanks for watching. Remember to sign up on Twitter for updates on new Coffee Break training videos and more. In part 2 of this session we'll look further into task scheduling and consider what happens when a priority inversion occurs.